Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the structure of graphene and of fullerenes. You should then be able to describe the properties of graphene and fullerenes and link these to their structures. In the last video, we looked at graphite. Graphite is formed from layers of carbon atoms arranged in hexagonal rings. We saw that each carbon atom has one outer electron which is not in a covalent bond. These electrons are delocalized, which means that they're not attached to any individual carbon atom. Delocalized electrons can move. Because of these delocalized electrons, graphite is a good conductor of both electricity and thermal or heat energy. Now in this video, we're looking at graphene and at fullerenes. These molecules are all based on carbon atoms. Let's start by looking at graphene. Graphene is a single layer of graphite. This means that graphene is only one atom thick. So let's look at the properties of graphene. Firstly, graphene is a good conductor of electricity. That's because graphene has delocalized electrons. These delocalized electrons can move through the graphene molecule carrying electrical charge. So in the future, graphene will be useful in electronics. Secondly, graphene is both extremely strong and has a high melting and boiling point. That's because graphene has a large number of strong covalent bonds. These covalent bonds require a great deal of energy to break. These properties will make graphene useful for producing new materials. Okay, we're going to look now at molecules called fullerenes. Fullerenes are also based on carbon atoms. However, fullerene molecules have hollow shapes. Usually, fullerenes have hexagonal rings of carbon atoms. However, fullerenes can also have rings with five or seven carbon atoms. Now, the first fullerene molecule to be discovered is called Buckminster fullerene, and I'm showing you a picture of Buckminster fullerene here. Buckminster fullerene contains 60 carbon atoms arranged in a hollow sphere. The carbon atoms form rings with either six carbon atoms or with five carbon atoms. Now, fullerenes such as this have a number of uses. Firstly, they can be used to deliver drugs such as pharmaceuticals into the body. Secondly, they can be used as lubricants in machines where they reduce friction between moving parts. And finally, they can be used as catalysts to speed up chemical reactions. Now, one really interesting group of fullerenes are called carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes are fullerenes shaped into long cylinders with a relatively small diameter. Scientists say that carbon nanotubes have a very high length to diameter ratio. Again, we can see that we have rings formed from six carbon atoms. Carbon nanotubes have several very useful properties. Firstly, they have a high tensile strength. This means that we can apply a great deal of stretching force to a carbon nanotube before it breaks. Secondly, carbon nanotubes have delocalized electrons. This makes them good conductors of electricity. Carbon nanotubes are also good conductors of heat. Now, the uses of carbon nanotubes are still being investigated. However, one use of carbon nanotubes is to reinforce materials, for example, in high-end tennis rackets. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my Vision Workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. 